what do we see here we see stickers that glow in the dark now what is so special about these stickers that they do not need any electricity or any battery to glow in the dark well these are radium stickers so again what is so special about radium there are so many elements around us but why does radium allow the stickers to glow while any other element which we encounter in daily life does not glow like this because radium nucleus is a bit different from the usual atoms that we see now how is it different for that let's first understand how a normal atom looks like now this is a usual structure of an atom now we have a nucleus in the middle and then we have electrons orbiting the nucleus now this nucleus contains protons and neutrons so this nucleus only has protons and neutrons and the electrons are orbiting the nucleus now this nucleus usually is very stable so you will usually not see any reactions or radiations from the nucleus but in certain cases the nucleus becomes unstable and then it starts emitting radiation so let's understand with an example now what do we see here two images one has corn seeds now in this case the corn seeds are dormant do you see any reactions in the corn seed no but the same corn seed on heating that is on change of condition reacts differently so the same corn seed reacts differently under a different condition now similar thing happens with a nucleus a nucleus is usually stable but in certain conditions the nucleus becomes unstable and then it starts emitting radiation so let's understand how the entire thing becomes unstable that is the entire nucleus becomes unstable so first of all let's see this particular nucleus which is nucleus of a helium atom now in this nucleus we have two neutrons and two protons now protons are positively charged so they should repel each other but how are they together because there are certain nuclear binding forces that act on these nucleons and they stay together so while these protons are repelling each other the nuclear binding forces are holding them together now there are certain conditions in which this stability is disturbed that is there is an imbalance of forces and then the nucleus becomes unstable so let's understand what are the different conditions for that a major condition is that if protons that is number of protons is larger than 83 in that case the nucleus will be unstable so why 83 because it has been calculated that once number of protons is more than 83 then the repulsive forces between protons becomes larger than nuclear binding forces and thus the nucleus becomes unstable so this is one very important criteria whenever number of protons or we can say that atomic number is more than 83 then that nucleus will be unstable but does that mean all the nuclei which have atomic number lower than 83 are stable well usually they are but even there there are certain conditions or certain exceptions so even when number of protons is lesser than or equal to 83 even then there can be instability in the nucleus now first criteria is that if number of protons is larger than number of neutrons in this case the nucleus will be unstable so if number of protons is larger than number of neutrons the nucleus will always be unstable also if number of protons is much less than number of neutrons even then the nucleus will be unstable so what is the difference well in the first case 
number of protons is larger than number of neutrons. So we have large number of protons as a result huge repulsive forces as a result instability of the nucleus. Now in the second case number of protons is very less compared to number of neutrons. Now what happens in this case? Well in this case again we know that nuclear binding forces are already there. Now the repulsive forces between proton and the nuclear binding forces they balance each other only then the nucleus remains in a stable state. Now in this case the repulsive forces are almost non-existent so only nuclear binding forces are acting. So again there is an imbalance of forces inside the nucleus and as a result even here you will see instability in the nucleus. So when will it be stable? Well the only condition when a nucleus will be stable is when number of protons is somewhat lesser or equal to number of neutrons. So this is the only condition when nucleus will be stable. So what do we understand from this? When number of protons is larger than 83 then the nucleus will be unstable. If number of protons is larger than number of neutrons nucleus will be unstable. If number of protons is very less compared to number of neutrons then again the nucleus will be unstable and if number of protons is somewhat less than or equal to neutrons then we will see a stable nucleus. So now can you answer this question? Nuclei having number of protons greater than dash are unstable. Is it 80? Is it 84? Is it 83? What do you think is the right answer? Well, the right answer is 83. So, nuclei having number of protons greater than 83 are unstable. And such unstable nuclei emit radiation. And that is why they are called radioactive substances. So what do we mean by radioactive substances? Radioactive substances have unstable nuclei which disintegrate or decay and emit spontaneous radiation. So radiation is emitted by radioactive substances spontaneously. Now what are some common radioactive nuclei? Uranium-235 with an atomic number of 92 is a radioactive element. Similarly, radium-228 with an atomic number of 88 is again a radioactive element. Also, carbon-14 with an atomic number of 6 is also a radioactive element. Now in this what do we notice? Well we have number of protons here 92, here we have number of protons as 88. So both are greater than 83. So we can understand that these have unstable nuclei and they are radioactive. But what about carbon 14? It has only 6 protons, still it exhibits radioactivity. Why is it so? Let's understand. Now these are the isotopes of carbon. Now this is the most common form of carbon which we encounter, carbon 12. Now it has 6 protons and 6 neutrons. So definitely it has a stable nucleus. Now another isotope of carbon is carbon 13. Again in this case we have 6 protons and 7 neutrons. So in this case what is happening? Well the number of protons is somewhat less that is just one less than number of neutrons. So again this is stable. But as we come to carbon 14 then what is happening? Again we have 6 protons but 8 neutrons. Now because the number is very small so even the difference between 8 and 6 is pretty large in this case. So we can say that in this case protons
is much lesser than neutrons and as a result we have an unstable nucleus and when we have an unstable nucleus it will exhibit radioactivity so carbon 14 is an isotope of carbon and it is radioactive so we can say that carbon 14 is a radioisotope of carbon so what are radioisotopes some isotopes of stable elements have an unstable combination of neutrons and protons making them radioactive such isotopes are called radioisotopes in this case carbon 14 is a radioisotope of carbon so carbon usually comes in the form of carbon 12 which is stable but carbon 14 is a radioisotope of carbon which is radioactive so the question arises why do some nuclei decay well we know that radioactive elements and isotopes have unstable nuclei and such nuclei emit radiation in the form of energy and particles to become more stable so to attain stability they emit energy and particles and this phenomenon is called radioactive decay now let's understand some conditions inside the nucleus now inside the nucleus we have neutrons and protons now these neutrons and protons are bound by strong nuclear force now in some nuclei the combination of neutrons and protons is such that they are not stable that is the entire combination is not stable and because of which it emits certain radiation and that radiation is called radioactive radiation and such elements whose nucleus is not stable and they emit nuclear radiation are called radioactive elements now let's come back to the radium stickers which we were talking about so what is so special about radium well radium is a radioactive element so it emits radiation but the radioactive radiation is not visible to our eyes so why does it glow well the glow is because the radiation which is coming out of radium that excites the air particles around it and it is the glow of the air particles that is seen by our eyes so what we see as the glow of the radium is not exactly the radioactive radiation of radium in fact it is the glowing air particles which are excited due to the radiation of the radium particles so radium is a radioactive element and radium is called radioactive because it has an unstable nucleus resulting in radiation so any element which has an unstable nucleus resulting in radioactive radiation is called a radioactive element don't forget to subscribe to our channel you can also register for free at deltastep.com to get all learning resources as per icse cbse ib cambridge or any other curriculum over 5,000 amazing lectures across maths, science, English and social science. Our unique interactive video technology keeps you engaged and our iDictionary feature allows you to quickly revise any concept. Master each topic at your own pace with our adaptive practice technology and 1 million plus questions. Get instant answers and detailed solutions. Be exam ready by taking unlimited mock tests. Performance analysis along with actionable feedback. Personal tutors to resolve your slightest of doubts. That's not all. You also get amazing prizes like Playstations, iPads, watches and many more. Along with certificates through our Earn As You Learn program. So at deltastep.com Learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So, register for free now.